Welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. How are you today, my friend? Grab yourself a cup of tea and join us. I think, uh, I hope that a lot of you saw yesterday's program with my guest, uh, Jenny Dent Brandt, because I'm talking to her again today. Um, she was so good, I just asked her to stay around, and we talked a little bit more about this book, Unleash Your God-Given Healing. And this has a lot of information on her own experience and journey in the cancer experience. But this book, wish I had the vocabulary to tell you how impressed I am with it, it even deals with uh, emotional problems from your childhood and all kinds of situations that we would never think of. But the Bible does say we're fearfully and wonderfully made. And boy, is that ever a mystery but it kind of suggests that it all works together. And of course, she deals with the spiritual end, but also as a layman, she mapped out everything she could possibly think of. And then there are many doctors who validated what she found out. So you'll have information on that. And uh, after you meet her, if you didn't meet her yesterday and hear what she had to say, uh, there will be a website up so that you can get the book through that. And I'm going to join Stephanie Get this, we're gonna make a taco fiesta bubble up casserole. And if you're within 10 miles of here right now, you can probably smell it, it smells divine. I will tell you it's very, very big. Uh, there's only a couple of you, or maybe four, I would cut the recipe in half, but it's got everything in it and uh, we're going to put it together for you. And um, I do want to remind you, we are viewer supported. I cannot tell you how deeply it touches me to get some, mail from you wonderful viewers and you've enclosed a check an offering for nothing except to give it that is so wonderful and it is in god's sight as well so if you use a credit card you can call 1-800-229-0059 or write to us that old-fashioned way you know where you get out a pen and you address it and you put a stamp on it remember that Homekeepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. And I am working with a cook right now who doesn't remember how you address something. I had to send something to the IRS this morning, so I do. Oh, joy, oh, joy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because they don't take... Uh... Oh, no, I pay everything online, but the, I had to send a special letter because they're trying to mess with my husband's pension, so I had to... Send a Boy, letter off. You're on it. Yeah. Yeah. What shall I do? I okay, spray so this. I have a pound of hamburger. I'm going to put in a packet of taco seasoning. Okay, and we're going to let that sit for a minute. And then I'm going to put a cup and a third of salsa in there. And I'm going to do what I you're do so spray well. spray the pan and look beautiful. Mm, it smells good. It, um, There's just a million ways you can do taco stuff. This is just another... Um, you know, we've done Jiffy Mix. We've done all kinds of different ones. Would you say, quick. though, there's something so all-American about the taco? Sure. You um, could add refried beans to Americans this Americans love. I remember the first taco I ever had. What? I know, I know. I'm old. But um, that's, no kidding. This, You know how a, a young girl that's kind of growing up, but she likes to hang around a teenager and older? Sure. Well, this older girl... Uh, she was probably 18, <laughs> older, and she made a taco. Never heard of one ever. How old were you? Well, I would have been uh, 10, maybe. Wow. And I'm so impressed. <laughs> you do that better than anybody that's been on this show, you know that? Well, thank you. I have many talents, and opening biscuits mm -hmm. must be one of them. So, okay, so I have a... I have biscuits, mm -hmm. and we're just going to take each one, and we're going to cut them into six. Okay. okay. And then we're going to put half of them on the bottom of the 9 by 13 mm -hmm. pan, right? And then I'm going to put half of the meat mixture. We have onions. We have peppers. Mm -hmm. We have cheese. And then we have green onions to go on top, okay? So, so it is simple. A, it is a meal. It's an yeah, entree. Yeah, for sure. And if you added refried beans on like the top of this at the very end after you baked mm -hmm. it, yum. I'm trying to think for the American cuisine, mm -hmm. have we adopted more Mexican food or Italian maybe? Ooh, that's a good question. I don't know. All I would the say above. equal. Yeah, for sure. Equal. So good. Okay, let me do two of these at the same time. 
I just don't like to squish them together. And uh, you can you can see how big this recipe is. This will this will feed your family for sure. Yeah, probably for a couple of days. You know, well, American families aren't very big anymore. That's true. Unless, so. Or feed you know um, take it to a church. Oh, this is dinner. a church supper dish Although for sure. Although right now you know we're not doing much of that. But no. Do okay. you want me to? I'll I'll do things while you're doing okay. that. Okay. I just need to. Here, just filled up a little this. bit. No, nope, I need, uh, that'll be on the top. I just oh, they, sure. okay. Yeah, we do half and half. So you oh, can okay, cut those, okay. though. You okay. can cut them. Um, I do half of the meat mixture. You're right. Um, not a lot of church activities going on well, right we're now. we're barely meeting right now because right. of the COVID. If I don't ever hear that again after this is all over, I'll be happy. I would say, how dare the government close our churches. Yes. So onion, this is raw onion. Let's go read the Constitution, friends. Right? Yep. It's time we stand up and take care of some business. Pepper. Uh-huh. Peppers. And uh, if you want to be really fancy, I would say put some green ones. Yeah, you could do green, yellow, and red. Mm -hmm. Yes. That would be But delicious. You know, if you're going to have uh, uh, some company over, you could put this together. Yeah. Ahead That's of time, of pop meat. it in the oven. Give me mm -hmm. some more biscuits. Let me mm -hmm. put this over here. You know, uh, more onion. Well, actually, you got most of this done. I didn't realize it was really two layers. Yeah. With the um, biscuit dough. Yes. And if you're yeah. even feeding a bigger crowd, like a holiday or something, mm -hmm. you can double up on this and make a huge one and be done with it. Mm -hmm. Okay, cheese. And I'm going to show the. And then there's green onions on top. Do you think everybody in this building can have lunch today? Well, I don't. I don't know. Can they? <laughs> oh. Okay. Do you want to give this a taste? Because I've sure. got to talk. Yes. Can't talk. I know it's going to be good the because time. it's taco. I mean, it mm -hmm. can't, it's mm -hmm. not going to be bad, that's mm -hmm. for sure. The flavors, all those seasonings. So good. Wonderful, yes. Yes, so uh, this recipe is yours mm -hmm. at no cost. And that information is coming up on your screen. There are several ways that you can get it. Choose the one that's most convenient for you. And uh, then if you didn't meet Jenny yesterday, you will today. And she's full of knowledge, full of uh, wisdom. <clears throat> You're going to get a lot out of her conversation. Stay with us. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. Well, Jenny, I want to thank you again for staying around. Uh, this is such an important subject. Okay. And uh, as I said on the last program, this book you can understand. It's not, quote, a medical book. Um, I, I did get the impression that you, you just had the sense, I guess, probably the Lord gave it to you, to really try to be a partner with the doctor. Say, okay, I, what, what can I do to make your job easier? Amen. I mean, what can I do to give you the best terrain to work on, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. what, what do I need to change in my terrain to make it better? And I had doctors that were willing to do that, and the doctor that wrote the book with me, that wrote the commentary throughout the book, also believes that what the patient does is very important mm -hmm. because you don't, you want to kill the cancer, and then you don't want it coming back. Mm -hmm. And if you got cancer and you don't make any changes, then eventually mm -hmm. that same cancer mm -hmm. or another cancer can appear because something went wrong because God makes our immune system mm -hmm. to fight cancer every day, to fight disease, to heal, repair, and detox. But we just want to make sure we don't get in the way of how He created the body mm -hmm. by our lifestyle habits. Uh, I think this would just require a lot of prayer that you go to the right doctor. I and uh, you did seek a second opinion. We talked about that um, the last on the last program. But I've had a couple of experiences where I felt the Holy Spirit said, "Stay away from this, and this is the this is the route to go." Um, and so we we did talk about exercise, and that's not 
you know, that's not getting a trainer and pumping iron. I mean, that's fine. You can do that. But just walking <laughs> doesn't cost anything to walk. It doesn't cost a dime to walk. Mm -hmm. And when you walk, it's pumping that lymphatic system. And so when the chemo goes in, okay, it's going to help it target the cancer. And then all that trash has to be moved out afterwards. And if you're not moving, it's going to recirculate in your body. Yeah, and it's going so to find a place key. to land. <laughs> uh, what's so interesting is when I did it by instinct, no one told me to walk before mm -hmm. and after chemotherapy. But after I finished the chemotherapy, all this research came out in Australia with all these entities coming together and they were saying clearly that exercise is the best thing that a cancer patient can do during each part of the treatment. It makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. So now I have the research to back up what I did by, by instinct, yeah. but now I understand, yes, it's key to exercise. Mm -hmm. It's key to living. Mm -hmm. um, okay, you referred to a Baptist lifestyle in the book. I think you need to describe that. Well, you think of the Baptist Explain lifestyle. It. I've been on Baptist boards. I've been on the International Mission Board. I've been active in my church. And you think of Baptist as generally we don't smoke, <laughs> we don't, we don't drink, uh -huh. we don't go to wild parties and these kind of things, you know. And we so do here, dessert. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I'll sure do a lot of dessert, you know. Yeah. But I think that's, that's kind of the way. Of denominations, yeah. Yeah. When you look at the fact that smoking and drinking are risk factors, for cancer, smoking just plain period, mm -hmm. drinking if it's not in, in moderation. So you would think that because I was Baptist and lived a certain lifestyle, I would be less likely to get cancer. And that might usually be true. But in this case, it was not. As a matter not of fact, enough. yeah, there were, there were 10 women I served on the board with in the 1990s, the International Mission Board of the Southern Baptist Convention. Seven out of 10 of us got breast cancer. Now so that's, much for the Baptist yeah, lifestyle. Right, huh? I know, we're sitting there going. But the further I looked, I kept saying, I know there's a reason. I don't have the regular risk factors, but I know there's a reason. And the more I looked, the more I discovered, yes, there were reasons. Okay, give them to us. Well, one of the reasons that I discovered that I got cancer, and it's never one, one thing. It's usually multifactorial, unless you were at Chernobyl when it blew with the radiation. You could say, Chernobyl mm -hmm. caused my cancer mm -hmm. because of all the radiation, right? Right. Of course, I couldn't say that. So, I asked some integrative doctors to measure things in my body. We were looking, just trying to figure out what was going on, and part of it was because I had bought a sauna, because after the chemo was over, you have all these chemicals you need to get out of your body. Okay. So you bought a sauna. So yes, you can buy an in-home sauna to do that. There was no place around me that had a sauna. And I volunteered to be part of a clinical trial for that sauna company, and they were going to measure things in my body as I continued to use the sauna. Well, they ended up measuring toxic chemicals in my body. And when I got the first test results back, I went, oh my goodness, I've got like 12 of these in my body and they're at high levels. So does the sun sweat those out? Yes, your skin is your largest detox right. organ. And every time you sweat, you are sweating toxins out. I mean, it's like God knew we would live in a toxic environment. He gives us the liver, the lungs, mm -hmm. the colon, the kidneys, and the skin as filtering systems. Mm -hmm. But I had allowed too many chemicals to rise up in my body at high levels. And if they're in and they're out, they're not doing as much damage. But mine were building up. My toxic load was high. Finding and that a was, home. <laughs> yeah, finding a home. And the interesting thing was if you looked at the chemicals in the profile, one of them was glyphosate and one was D24, the Agent Orange pesticide. Both of these are sprayed on our crops, okay? And so those two were at high levels in my body According to Dr. Stephanie Seneff at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, one of their major medical researchers, they're endocrine disruptors. So bingo, I had an endocrine-fed cancer, estrogen, and these things contain estrogen-mimicking qualities. Eating just normal food. Yes, healthy food even. Yes. Okay? So bingo, I'm finding out, okay, so what did I do? I switched over to what we call organic fruits and vegetables as much as possible. Some things it doesn't matter, and there are charts by the Enver Environmental Working Group that show you the clean 
15, the fruits and vegetables like avocados. How do you know they're we organic? Don't they have a nine on them. When you look at the produce section, organic has a nine on it. But you don't think they're mixing the fruit up? I no, guess it's, it's, a, it's a high standard to be organic. Mm -hmm. And if you get something from a local farmer, you can ask that them, would you be know, the best. What, did, yeah, what did you spray on this? And if they just sprayed a few times, it's not going to be as bad as the GMO foods are the ones that are heavily glyphosated and they mm -hmm. are genetically modified mm -hmm. to be able to handle high amounts of chemicals being sprayed on them, but it doesn't, and they don't die, but that is passed on to you. Mm -hmm. So when you find these things high in your body, you can't deny that that's a problem. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, there's so much in this book, you need to get it because we can't really cover it in a couple of programs, called Unleash Your God-Given Healing. And you can get it on her website, you can get it at Amazon, and I'm telling you, it just covers everything. Bible says, good understanding giveth favor. Yeah. And I, I love that verse. You can go long and be stupid and not <laughs> curious and all those things, but you understand some things that give you favor. Um, there's so much in this, but we're gonna move on. There's a connection between cancer and Alzheimer's? Well, the connection is that a lot of the same things that cause Alzheimer's, my father died from that. My mother, sister, and I were the, were the caretakers for nearly 10 years. Mm -hmm. But the same things is the high toxic load. As we age, your body cannot handle that many toxins. And so toxins is related to, and it's coming from fruits mm -hmm. and vegetables and things, but it's coming from the things that we're doing, and it's related to cancer, and it's related to Alzheimer's. And I went to the Alzheimer's Research Conference with my mom as my father was dying from it, and they allowed us to ask questions. And basically they said we need those phytochemicals and those antioxidants that are in fruits and vegetables, okay? And at that time they didn't qualify, they needed to be organic, okay? Mm -hmm. But we need that to overcome all of the pesticides and all of the chemicals that we are exposed to in our environment. So as our chemical load goes up, we need to eat more fruits, vegetables, right nuts and seeds, the Daniel diet, Garden of, of Eden. Garden of Eden, right that's there. exactly right. Um, okay, here are some risk factors that she's listed. Alcohol, um, you need a healthy weight, you need physical activity, shouldn't smoke. Uh, age, what's that got to do with it? At about age 60, your risk for all cancers goes up significantly. Oh, really? And it's because your immune system is getting older. Kind of thinning out a little yeah. bit. So you can expect that more people after the age of 60 are going to be at risk for higher rates of, of cancer. And not having children. That one really threw Women me. Are meant it's to not, bear it's not fair because, yeah. you know, what if you couldn't have children? Right, right. But the fact that you are pregnant lowers your estrogen load. The fact that you breastfeed lowers your estrogen load. I breastfed twins and my other son for two years. So that should have lowered my estrogen load, but evidently all the chemicals upped it, so it helped, but only I so think much. That, I think that's amazing, because everything kind of goes back to God's plan, live kind of like he outlined, and you're gonna be all right. And then they've added the dense breast as a risk factor just in the last few weeks. They're but starting- What can you do about that? You can't, but you have to use different methods to help to detect the cancer. You really, oh, you're right. Right, because really they can can't. hide in there. Yeah, you really can't do anything um, about it. But. I love this one, breastfeeding humans and whales. <laughs> well, we were on a whale expedition in British Columbia out there in the water, and they were talking about how the female orcas detox when they nurse their young, and they live longer. Now, some of the babies don't make it because of the toxins they're getting from the mother. The males don't make it as long because they're not nursing. So when you nurse... Great to be a woman. <laughs> <laughs> but let me tell you this. There are women today, my daughter-in-law was one of these, she detoxed her body before she got pregnant, knowing that her toxic load would Good pass her. to her, her baby. And then while she was nursing, you know, she'd already detoxed so that her daughter's gonna get cleaner milk, mm -hmm. basically. So I'm seeing a lot of young women on the ball about this. Yes, and I just commend you for a book for laymen that has this much information. Okay, um, 
this kind of goes without saying, but she spends a lot of time in the book on uh, water. I have to remind myself to drink water. And I thank God I, I don't like um, any kind of soda drinks at all. I just drink fruit juice and water. Uh, I do put sugar in my tea in the morning, my hot tea in the morning. But um, that's never been a problem with me, but I just have to remind myself to drink water. You have to think to drink water. But let me tell you what count. Let me tell you how much water you need, first of all. I know, and I can't get it all up in one day. <laughs> <laughs> it's half your body weight in fluid ounces. So let's say you weigh 150 pounds. That would be 75 ounces of water a day. Here's the good news. You'd be going to the bathroom all the time. Well, you would, but a fruit smoothie that I'll make this afternoon. We drink a, a smoothie a day because we get six or seven superfoods in there. But that counts as hydration. Whenever you pair the water with, with fruit and with vegetables, mm -hmm. it enhances the hydration. So if you squeeze lemon or you put mint in your water. Now, tea does not count if it's caffeinated because the caffeine well, pulls water out of you. Well, you can't take my one caffeinated drink in the you morning You can have it, but you'd have me. to drink some water to make extra I water promise. to make up for it. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> That's my only vice. Well, I don't know. I like... I like sweets once in a while. But the water just, water enhances every cell and oh, every yeah. system in the body and can be a major preventative for cancer, for COVID, for any disease. Because Absolutely. Because all those miracles that God does in our body while we're just doing this interview are done in the medium of water. And a lot of um, information about water is in the Bible. It's huge. Okay. Got to hurry along, but you can, you need to get the book because we're just skimming the surface. Well, let me say this. I do have at JennyBrandt.com a cancer prevention blog that they oh, can good. sign up for. That's good to know, yes. Because new information keeps coming out. Mm -hmm. Okay, sleep. God is all powerful, but even he needed to rest. <laughs> well, I think he was setting the example for us because he knew we would need it. And you know, while we're here and talking, our body is performing those miracles. We may have a cancer cell. Our body is taking care of business. Mm -hmm. But when we sleep at night, those miraculous healings only go up because melatonin, a hormone created in our body while we're in deep sleep, is a major cancer fighter and immune builder. But you know, Jenny, I know for myself, I never had problems sleeping. I could sleep anywhere. But at this age, sometimes you lay awake for a long, long time. Um, and the more conversations I have with people, and I think it's because of the earth we live in. You know, we're, we're living in difficult times. Crazy we're world. We're being hit mm -hmm. all the time when we don't know it, and our emotions are get raw just watching the news. And uh, to turn all that off at night, I think that's so major if you can sleep. Yeah, it is. But one thing I had to look at carefully was what is in my bedroom that might be keeping me awake? Mm -hmm. The night light is now in the bathroom so that it only turns on when I walk that, that direction mm -hmm. because any type of light can keep you up. If you have, you know what a lot of people do, they plug their cell phone in next to their bed. Mm -hmm. That cell phone emits okay and that can interfere with even your melatonin. Even if it's not making any noise? Even if it's not making any noise. Oh my. That, I have a whole chapter on that in the book because that's one of the things I really goofed on mm -hmm. and most people do not realize. Mm -hmm. So I do not plug my, my cell phone. Not in the bedroom. Yeah, I put it in the bathroom mm -hmm. to plug it in at night. Okay, so. we've got a couple, uh, couple minutes left. Um, body weight is so important and we have an overweight nation we do it's just um, and not just cancer it affects every everything it's true and you won't see that many I've been in a lot of places in the world and you will not see a lot of people as overweight or as, as Americans as we are and that is one of the that is the number one risk factor for all cancers and underlying to a lot of other diseases. So here's the number one risk factor and we've got that by and large. And the doctor said, well, you don't have that according to your height and your weight. But you know, the further I looked and the more I read about, you know, each person's body is different. And 
one person, it might take them 100 pounds of being overweight mm -hmm. for things not to work as well. But I looked back and I was 30 pounds lighter when I got married 45 years ago. And what is that extra weight doing on me? It's not helping me at all. So no I've lost 10 of it. Overweight. Well, they wouldn't, but you know what? If you look carefully, I would say that I am overweight. I'm not obese, but I do need mm. to lose. I've lost 10 pounds. I need to lose another 10 or mm. 15 pounds because it's not doing my body any good. Mm -hmm. Another person, it might not bother them as mm -hmm. much. I can't tell you how wonderful it's been to have you on. This is the book. Uh, stay there. I have a couple of things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. Okay, let me remind you again uh, where viewers supported, and I can't thank you enough for your wonderful, wonderful gifts toward this ministry. And as we are watching so much chaos in our nation and you see young people totally, completely out of control, I think this is a very important program and I think you do too. So I wanna thank you for any dime you send to us. Uh, if you used your banking, cards and credit cards, 1-800-229-0059, or our address is Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758. Well, we have to agree that cancer is a scourge. Just this week, I lost a family member to cancer, and probably everyone I'm talking to right now, that's your experience that you lost some of my dad. and. So I'm, I'm thankful for this book. I'm thankful that um, it just gives us an understanding. The Bible says good understanding giveth favor. And also, let me encourage you that we pray for our doctors and researchers who are looking and looking uh, for a cure. And they are really making some giant strides when it comes to cancer. And so when you put it all together, all the good sense in this book and add prayer to it, I think we can be very hopeful. And I look forward to seeing you again soon, but remember there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers. 